I decided to combine the big three, the tap, the cut, and the roll, and the three major ornaments into a single lesson here on the flute. Uh, if you do want to go back and see some more detail on each or, or any of those, um, you can always take a look at the tin whistle lessons. I've got them broken up under the intermediate section as individual lessons, so feel free to do that. But they are kind of related, so I just grouped them all here under the flute. So uh, I'm going to start with the tap, and that is what it sounds like. We're, we're tapping the, the note below the main melody note that you're playing, and it chops up that main note into two. I'm going to run up a D scale. Obviously, we can't play it on a D uh, because there is no note below that. Um, but we'll start, we'll run up that scale here, and you can kind of hear how it sounds. I'm going to play them slowly first, uh, real deliberately, and then we'll, we'll play it more up-tempo the more, you, more way you'd be, you'd be apt to hear it if you're playing it at a proper tempo. So again, we're basically just tapping the note below it. And as I said, I made it very uh, exaggerated, very deliberate there. Uh, when we're really playing it at a proper tempo, you wouldn't hear that specific note, the one that you're, that you're tapping on. So I'll play it more up tempo here. So you can hopefully hear how that's supposed to sound uh, when you play it at the proper tempo. As you're practicing it, make sure you do play it very deliberately. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of folks who've, who've been working on them, and they're, they're so quick, they're trying to get them so fast that when they, when they do end up playing up tempo, they tend to get crushed and they just don't sound properly. So really try and make those deliberate, very strong, solid movements as you're playing those. So that's the tap. The next one is the cut, and the cut is the opposite. We're making a grace note above the main melody note. We did the tap below. This will be the grace note above. Um, you can use really any finger you want. I generally use uh, the, the ring finger on the top hand just because it sounds pretty good with this instrument. Feel free to experiment. Some folks will use the top finger. Some folks will use a different one. Try it up. See what works for you. Um, and then as you go up the, the, the scale, then you're just basically substituting the next finger up from the main melody note. So if I'm playing a G, you know, I, would, I could tap, or I could cut rather with this finger, I could use whichever one you want, anything above that. So I'll do the same thing starting on, on the D this time, and we'll go up the scale uh, doing the cuts. Again, I'll play it slowly at first. slowly and deliberately, uh, making sure that those notes sound, uh, so you can make sure you're doing the ornament correctly, and then now I'll play it again up-tempo to hear how you'd, see, how you'd hear it uh, more at a normal pace. So it's not supposed to make that note sound, but it is just to chop up the main melody note. But again, make sure you practice it slowly so you can get those things to sound correctly. Uh, the fun part here is the roll is the combination of the two. We're starting with the cut, followed by the tap. So it has kind of a, a three-note uh, triplet sort of a sound. It's not technically a triplet, but it has that effect, and it breaks the main melody note up into three. Uh, in this case, we're going to start on the E, since, again, we don't have the, the note below to play the D. And I'll go up the scale as well. I'm going to play each one slowly, and we'll go from there. So this is the roll. Hopefully you could hear each individual part of that, the cut followed by the tap. When you're playing it on tempo, you want it to sound like more of a, of a cohesive ornament. Um, so we'll play that uh, quickly here so you can hear how it's supposed to sound. playing up tempo in a tune, it tends to kind of roll together. That's where they get the name. It's, it, it's particularly common in jigs as you're, as it's got that kind of a, a, a triplet sort of a time. And here's how that would, here's how that would go. So again, tap, or rather a cut followed by the tap, and you want to make sure each part of that sounds distinctly. Uh, so again, make sure you practice it slowly and work up to the, the proper tempo, and then in the later lessons we'll get into where specifically you're going to put those in the tunes uh, as you're learning them. So the tap, the cut, and the roll, 
And as always, feel free to, to uh, contact if you've got any questions.